and welcome back to Books and Things. This time I'm going to be doing an on my shelf video. This was something started by Sana from Books and Quills, whose channel I will link down below, but to be honest, if you're watching any booktube, you probably do know who she is. On her on my shelf video last week, she gave us some numbers of books to talk about on your shelves. So it's like a shelf number and like a book number. And then you have to go away, find what books are in those places on your shelves and talk about those books. So I'm going to do that now. Firstly, one and three. So the third book on my first bookshelf slash space of room that is where books are kept, even though it's not technically a bookshelf, is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte, one of my favourites ever of all time because it's wonderful. This is probably in my top five books of all time. I've read it a lot. I was lucky enough to study it both at school and at university, so I've read it ten times maybe, lots and lots of times. It is wonderful, it is amazing, I love it because all the characters are not very nice but you like them anyway. If you haven't read Wuthering Heights, it is hard to explain. It is a very complicated, weavy, many-layered narrative that focuses on two families in the Yorkshire Moors. One is a family that live at a place called Wuthering Heights, and one is a family that live at a place called Rushworth Grange. At Wuthering Heights there is a family with two children, Catherine and Hindley, and then their father adopts another boy called Heathcliff who is quite mysterious and no one really knows where he comes from and it's about his interactions with the family and so on, his sort of love for Catherine, it's very complicated. It's not a romance, it is so much more complicated than that and many more many layered. This edition is one of the Everyman's Library which I really like. When I was, I think, 18 or something for my birthday I got like six, what were then my six favourite books in Everyman Classics. Most of them are still in my top ten but I feel like there are some others now there as well and yeah. One of my favourites ever. Next, two and eight. The eighth book on my second bookshelf, which is actually my mantelpiece, is The Art Curiosity Shop by Charles Dickens, because Dickens is wonderful. I own quite a lot of Dickens in this edition, not the whole set sadly, because I couldn't find them, but I bought these in a charity shop for one pound each, and they are from, I think, the very early 20th century, I think like 1910, about. They don't have a date inside them because when they were published, they didn't do dates then, but I looked up the publishing company online, that's when I think they're from. Which is very exciting because they're nice and old and I, I love I love a good old book. I love The Old Curiosity Shop, it's one of my favourite Dickens novels. I don't think it's one of his best, but it's one of my favourites if that makes sense. As with many Dickens novels there are many many plots. The central plot is about a young girl called Nell and her grandfather. Her grandfather is very much in debt and so they run away and go on various like adventures around England etc. The other half of the book stays in London with various characters including a wonderful character who is atrociously named Dick Swiveller and is one of my favourite Dickensian characters of all time, which is why I love this book so much. Next Next, the first book on my sixth bookshelf would be this one, which is The Anthology. This is an anthology of short stories published by a publishing company called Unthank Books. This is the sixth one. I haven't read that many of the others, but I love this. I thought it was brilliant. I ended up reading it because a couple of my friends from my creative writing MA had, had stories in it, and I ended up reviewing it for Anthology and got like a review copy, which was exciting. This was, I think, one of the first things that I'd received a review copy for, and like the first physical book I got a review could be for so it was really exciting and I'll link my review on that down below. I really like the anthology like team, I'm curious to read more anthologies in the future because I thought this was great and there are some really wonderful moving stories in here and there's such a wide variety which I always like. Next, the 15th book on your 8th shelf. This is very fittingly The Chimes by Anna Smale, which I literally finished yesterday and it is incredible and amazing and so good. I will talk about it more in my monthly wrap up. I'm also going to do a full review on my blog which I will link down below when it appears. Anyway, I am in love with this book. It is so amazing. It's a sort of dystopian but it's set in this future of England where everything is run by music so there's no written words and everyone kind of communicates with music and music runs everyone's lives but also everyone is running out of memory like everyone keeps forgetting everything because there is this massive thing called the chimes which happens every day in which there is all this beautiful music played at you which kind of makes you forget and it's just so inventive and brilliant and because life is run by music like the central character it's first person and the narrative style is therefore full of like music references and he doesn't say like we walked slowly he says we walked lento because that's like the musical term for slowly and instead of saying suddenly something happened it's subito something happened which for some reason is just doesn't feel clumsy in the way that suddenly often does it was incredible like the language is just so utterly beautiful and the world is incredible it's so like deep and complicated and the characters i love simon and lucian and just their relationship friendship or whatever was wonderful and just oh my goodness i'm so in love with this book 
I wish it had been like five times the length because I wanted to inhabit this world for so much longer. It is wonderful. It is one of the most beautifully written dystopian things I've ever read. I am just so in awe. I'm glad I got to talk about this so soon. I don't think I'll be able to wait till my wrap up to talk about it. It's so good. Finally, the 24th book on my third shelf. I didn't realise my shelves actually would hold more than 24 books. This number surprised me and I was like, oh, actually, there's a lot of books. I have a lot of books. I wonder how many I have. Anyway. Gardens of the Moon by Stephen Erickson, which is the first in the Malazan Book of the Fallen series. I have not read this, so I cannot tell you that much about it, other than it is a fantasy series which comes very, very, very highly recommended from my brother, but I haven't read it yet, sorry. It's on my shelf rather than his shelf in his old room to remind me that I should read it, but I haven't yet. Especially when it's like the first one in a series and I know I'm going to want to read all of them, then I'm really bad at actually starting the series, but I'm looking forward to this. Anyway, hopefully that will have been quite a quick video to make a change from my normal Thursday videos, which recently have been of massive length, because when I do tag videos I just talk and I just can't can't stop. I will link Sana's original video down below and if you also want to do this you should because it's really fun and it's nice to talk about books that I wouldn't necessarily otherwise talk about. Let me know if you've read any of these books down in the comments and what you thought of them and I'll be back on Monday with another video. Have a nice few days of reading.